From Dzerzhinsky in 1917 to Pakatin in 1991, 21 persons took turns heading the Soviet state security agencies. The fates of these people were completely different. One of them escaped Russian Tsar's prisons and were hiding from imperial police. Another one conspired against the last leader of the USSR. Many of them probably wanted to become the head of the whole country and one of them was even able to do it. So five of them were executed as the enemies of the Soviet regime. I will tell you about each of them. My name is Pavlo and this is KGB Files. Derzhinsky, the founding father. Felix Derzhinsky came from a Polish noble family who lived in the Russian Empire. The family estate of Derzhinovo, where he was born, is located in Belarus today. An interesting fact, Derzhinsky's father was a mathematics teacher and the famous writer Anton Chekhov was among his students. Jan Felix was a Catholic and dreamed of becoming a priest as a child. But it did not work out. In his youth he was carried away by social democratic ideas and became a professional revolutionary. 1897, 1900, then 1905. Then uh, there were so many times when Russian police arrested the revolutionary Dzerzhinsky. He constantly escaped custody, but then he was arrested again. In total, until 1917, he spent 11 years in prisons. At the time of the October Revolution, Dzerzhinsky was one of Lenin's close associates. In December 1917, on the instructions of the Bolshevik leaders, he created an organization that was supposed to fight the enemies of the regime, the All-Russian Extraordinary Commission. Abbreviated in Russian, this is VCK, or simply the CK. Dzerzhinsky and his subordinates were called Czechists. This name is used informally to this day. The Cheka became the main instrument of the Red Terror during the Russian Civil War. But this is a topic for a separate episode. Dzerzhinsky is also known as the Iron Felix, and there is a legend about the origin of this nickname. Once Dzerzhinsky, being the head of the Cheka, was sitting in his office on Lubyanka Square in Moscow. Suddenly, someone threw a grenade into a window of his room. Dzerzhinsky reacted instantly. He ran to a safe in the office and hid inside. His subordinates, who came to the sound of the explosion, were shocked when they saw smoke, broken furniture and their boss, who did not even get a scratch. And that's how the nickname arose. The Cheka was disbanded in 1922. The GPU was created in its place. But it was transformed into the OGPU the following year. Subsequently, the name, structure, subordination and functions of the Soviet state security bodies changed many times. We will talk about this as briefly as possible. Derzhinsky's organization worked not only in the USSR but also abroad. Operations against emigrant anti-Soviet structures became the pride of the Secret Service. One of the victims of the OGPU during this period was the legendary British spy Sidney Rayleigh. He was tricked into going to Moscow, arrested and shot. Rayleigh later became one of the prototypes of James Bond. Dzerzhinsky died in 1926, shortly after a lengthy emotional speech at a meeting. After his death, he became a cult figure, a real idol for the state security bodies, as well as the police. His portraits are still hung in offices of many Russian police and the FSB officers. The same is in Belarus, and until recently it used to be in Ukraine. Often these portraits are accompanied by Iron Felix's quotes, like The absence of your conviction is not your merit, but our flaw. Menjinsky, the successor it happened that the first deputy of Dzerzhinsky and the next head of the OGPU after him was also a Pole, Vyacheslav Menjinsky. He had qualities that, it may seem, are not suitable for a person in such a position. Quiet, modest, polite, gentle. Menjinsky received a good education and, according to sources, spoke 19 languages. Menjinsky is rarely remembered today. He led the OGPU for eight years, though. During his leadership, 
Stalin strengthened his power and defeated the opposition, including Trotsky. The were forced industrialization, collectivization of agriculture, and major high-profile trials on falsified charges. The notorious Gulag was created. In the 1930s, Menzhinsky was very ill and often held meetings at his home, sitting on the couch. He died in 1934. Yagoda, the first shot. After the death of Menzhinsky, the OGPU was attached to the NKVD, which became the new state security body. It was headed by Genrich Yagoda, a close associate of Dzerzhinsky and Menzhinsky. You can see Agoda on this photo with Derzinski's coffin next to the party's top, including Trotsky and Stalin. By the way, an interesting fact, all the red leaders in this photo, except Stalin and Kalinin, later became enemies of the people. Rikov, Yagoda, Kamenev and Bukharin were shot. Trotsky was killed by an NKVD agent, and Tomsky shot himself without waiting for his arrest. Let's go back to 1934. The high-ranking Bolshevik Sergei Kirov was killed at the end of that year, which became the reason for the intensification of political repression. The old Bolsheviks, Lenin's associates Grigory Zinoviev and Lev Kamenev, became the most famous victims of Yagoda. They were found guilty of connections by Trotsky, who lived in exile, the murder of Kirov, the preparation of terrorist attacks against the Soviet leadership, and were shot. Could Yagoda have guessed that his fate would be very similar? A month after the execution of Kamenev and Zinoviev, he was removed from his post of the NKVD's chairman. At first it might seem that nothing serious happened. He headed the Commissariat of Communications. Stalin wrote to him that it was a very important position and he hoped that Yagoda would be able to restore order in this sector. But this was a very bad signal. In the early 1937, Yagoda was removed from his current position and expelled from the party. A couple of months later, he was arrested. There is a well-known document, a report of a search in Yagoda's apartments, office and personal warehouses. We can see that the people commissar was not an ascetic at all. The list of found items consists of 130 paragraphs, including 1,229 bottles of wine, mostly foreign, 3,904 pornographic pictures, pornographic films, a huge amount of expensive clothes, collections of old weapons, smoking pipes, coins and antique dishes, a rubber artificial member. A dildo. Well, the stories about the NKVD can be different and sometimes like this. Many of them await us ahead, so subscribe and press the bell button not to miss the new ones. At the trial in 1938, Yagoda was accused of participation in the conspiracy of the so called Black of Rightists and Trotskyists, of working for fallen intelligence services, and of the murders of four people. Yagoda's friend, the writer Maxim Gorky, Gorky's son, Kirov and Menzhinsky. Yagoda was shot at the place where his country house was situated. Yagoda's wife, parents and sisters were condemned as relatives of an enemy of the people. Not so long ago, the media recalled this people commissar. The Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny, allegedly poisoned on the orders of Vladimir Putin, returned to Russia and was immediately arrested. The press got his photo again the background of the Yagoda's portrait at the police station. Yezhov, the Blooded Wolf Nikolai Yezhov received his nickname because of his height, only 151 centimeters and the unprecedented scope of repression during the period when he headed the NKVD. Unlike his predecessors, Yezhov was not a professional Czechist, but a party official. Although during the years of Yagoda he was the party curator of the NKVD and took an active part in the repressions. During the Yezhov's years, the NKVD turned into a real conveyor belt for destruction of people. 
disputes about the number of victims are still ongoing, but we will name one figure accepted by many scientists – 700,000 of the executed. It's larger than the population of Luxembourg and almost twice larger than Iceland. The historian Robert Conquest later called the mass operations of that time the Great Terror, but the people had another name – Yezhovism. The number 1937 itself, the year when the Great Terror began, became an ominous symbol. Was the Stalin's number one executioner a cruel and vicious person in his everyday life? Definitely not. Those who personally knew Yezhov later remembered him as a sweet, good nature and affable man who loved poetry, feasts and dances. Yezhov did what he did not because he was a sadist, but because his boss wanted him to do this. Nikita Khrushchev wrote in his memoirs that Yezhov understood that he is used by Stalin as a baton and drawn his conscience with the vodka. The People's Commissar Yezhov became a much more significant figure in the country than his predecessors. Some historians put him in the second place in the unofficial hierarchy of those years. The city, villages and streets bore his name. Poets dedicated their works to the Stalin faithful friend, sparing no epithets. Nikolai Yezhov fell from the Soviet Olympus as quickly as he climbed there. In parallel with the NKVD, he was appointed to the post of the People's Commissar of Water Transport, but it only weakened his influence. Yezhov's new first deputy, whose name was Lavrenti Beria, took many levers of state security control into his own hands and did not depend on his boss. Leaving the NKVD in November 1938 under Stalin's pressure, Yezhov understood what awaited him and asked the Soviet leader just to leave his 70-year-old mother alone. For the next month, Yezhov formally was supervising the water transport, but light with a feeling of doom, drank heavily and was late for work. His portraits were no longer hung on buildings, newspapers did not write odes to him. During two previous years, the head of the NKVD visited Stalin's office almost 300 times, and now he could not get a meeting with him even for a minute. Yezhov ceased to be the People's Commissar of Water Transport in April 1939 and was arrested the next day. He was accused of preparing the assassination of Stalin and the coup and of working for foreign intelligence services. He denied everything, admitting only one mistake – he purged too few KGB officers. Among other things, Yezhov was also accused of homosexual relationships, which were criminalized in the USSR. The former People's Commissar pleaded guilty in this part. A quote from the indictment. Acting for anti-Soviet and selfish purposes, Yezhov organized the murders of people he disliked and also for selfish purposes. Had sexual intercourse with men, beggary. Nikolai Yezhov has been executed in February 1940. Going to be short, he, according to some sources, was singing the International. Newspapers wrote nothing about the arrest and execution. For millions of Soviet people, Yezhov just disappeared as he had never existed. His name was removed from the street plates. New editions of books were printed with no mention of the former People's Commissar. The short figure of Yezhov was even removed from shared photos with Stalin. This was the Soviet cancel culture. Next time we will talk about the person who has become a meme in recent years – Lavrin Tiberia. And not only about him.